Hey guys, welcome back to part 2 of our 3D World tutorial on this volcano. Uh, we left off after putting our world machine uh, image map back into view and uh, applying it to our terrain um, that we added. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come in and texture this thing. So uh, the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to show you how I've textured um, the terrain for the final image and uh, we're going to work back from there and on then I'll show you my workflow. The reason I'm doing that is because, um, well one, because I'm not an artist as, as shocking as that might be. Um, I actually don't consider myself an artist. I, uh, If someone gives me an idea, I sit there blank face for about 10 minutes going, what the hell do I do? And um, then I then I start playing with with things, and I end up having a an image at the end of the day. But the the point to that is that I go through a heck of a lot of uh, trial and error um, to get where to get to where I end up. So I don't want to bore you guys and drag you through the rigmarole of of moving the slider by two percent and then just rendering again to test it, because uh, there's no point in you guys. Um, watching that happen because even with the fast machine it's still flipping slow so um, I'm going to render this and show you what I've what I've done with my terrain um, hopefully it will render doesn't want to which is always the case probably going to have to restart this damn video but that's alright <laughs> Oh, look at that. I'm sorry, but this is all too common. <laughs> um, yeah, good old view. Um, okay, let's, let's just close that. Force it closed. Open it up again. And I'm going to click yes. Okay, so um, what I've what I've done for the volcanoes, uh, which I was trying to render to show you, is I've turned on the highlight layer um, tool, and I was just going to show you all the different layers that are breaking up the details of the volcano, and that's something that is pretty um, pretty handy to do with your trains. Even it's great to have lighting um, where you cast shadows in areas which um, have detail so that you can bring out those details but in a in an area where you don't have uh, that ability say your client wants a sunset but you still want to be able to see the nice grooves in the in the uh, in the cliff side well this is what I'm about to show you and I just turned it to preview so okay so you can see all sorts of different colors and it looks like um, a unicorn's vomit really um, but this is demonstrating where each material go uh, goes so we've got our lava pit there and we've got heaps of lava around the edges which we don't really want and that's purely because I didn't uh, I didn't clean up my Photoshop file um, all too carefully I just sort of plonked it on there and I thought oh, I can deal with that later I can paint it out in Photoshop anyway um, on the on the cliffs here we've got to put a purple uh, predominant purple texture and then a, a, a green a greenish and a bluish texture um, they're the basically the three different ones that will that are making up the uh, the cliff side and then down here which you can't quite see but there's a bit of uh, pink there, and that's our dead grass, I believe. Let's have a look down. Have another render. Yeah, so you got pink, pink and green and purple and blue and yeah. Well, there's a song that's made of that. Um, so 
<clears throat> what that's doing is even in these shadow areas that you look in the top right of this image and you can actually see the different details even though there is no change in the lighting there same as the top left we've got really nice details being pulled out by the differences in these two materials so it's pretty simple how you do that um, it all depends on on you know what material you're actually trying to do do that with so if I bring it down here um, I'm not a fan of the material editor but this is what we've given we've got dead grass that's the pink stuff Let's see if I can bring that up and so there's the pink stuff so that's that's going to be like a dark brownish if I turn that off it's a brown and all that is is I've loaded up the standard grass node and I've changed the color to a brown that's that's as simple as that um, then we've got a gray brown rock which I've loaded and you can see this has got a nice twist and I'll show you simply I've just gone to rotation and changed the rotation to 15 of 15 I'll show you if you if you're not up to speed with me just uh, bear with me this is more for people who know exactly what I'm talking about want to skip straight to the to the guts of it um, we've got a, a mix here and basically all we're trying to do here is we've got the purple and um, turn this on purple and, and pink and the purple is covering all of the slope and the pink is covering all of the flatter areas and that's pretty much why we just selected an influence of slope 100% strong we want material 2 that being our dead grass we want that to be on the flatter surfaces so depending on depending on your own personal choice you can tweak that and I've set it to 10% uh, blending the next layer we have um, I've used only one mixing layer I prefer to use uh, a mix of mixed uh, mixed materials and simple layers on top. Um, the reason is just because I it's it's a little bit easier to control the height cutoffs um, with a single material. Uh, whereas, like if if I was to go in here and I want the pink one to come up halfway up the mountain, well, I've got this is all I've got to do it but whereas if I come here I go to the environment tab and I go altitude and I just go bang straight to zero and now that's going to be exactly halfway up um, exactly halfway up the the altitude of this mountain so this gray rock is our green material and that's filling in other um, areas around um, around our cliffs and that's got a as I, as I as you can see here a couple of different um, settings so the altitude the slope constraint that's a, a major one for having materials on cliffs because you don't want them to be on flat surfaces which is a slope range of zero degrees 45 degrees is obviously a 45 degree incline 90 degrees is a vertical face and well it goes up to 180 because you've got upside down faces of course um, Okay, and a key part of making these materials break up is the orientation constraint and that's that's a vertical orientation so the slope is essentially a a horizontal orientation constraint um, and what this is really good for um, to, to put it in simple terms um, or in, in the best way that I can give you an example of is if you have a a mountain that's covered in snow in, in real life this is and it's going to lose all its snow in summer the snow on its on its uh, sun facing side so in the southern hemisphere it's the snow on the northern side of the of the, the face of the mountain and in the northern hemisphere it'd be any snow that's pointing south will be the snow that melts first so if you were to then translate that to software like this uh, we have a mixed material we want snow on there but we want the snow to be melted um, as it starts to face the Sun so we'll have a, a constraint um, the the orientation is what degree and um, at like which direction do you want the uh, uh, the material to appear on and then the tightness is 
if it's at a hundred percent then it will only ever appear in this instance on uh, faces which are facing 139 degrees um, so that can be a really great uh, way to to find out exactly how, what this is doing it's just crank it up to not not to 100 I don't ever suggest you do that but say 80% you can already see this green here and as I move this around you can see that in this material preview you can see that uh, it's now starting to face different areas and if I crank that up it starts to really pinpoint right onto that to that edge and if I go to 100 you'll see that you can not even see it so anyway so that's uh, the gray rock then we've got another rock which we've got uh, a similar set of uh, constraints there and that is our aqua colored rock which is actually facing away from the sun so you can see them in here on these shadowed areas um, and just by the way um, this uh, what that leaves is this this purple gray brown rock is the one that's facing the camera mostly um, so that's in between the two and then our grass layer on the very top here uh, I haven't highlighted it. you can see it here it's the one that's breaking up this pink um, that's probably the best area to look at and the reason it's breaking up is because of the alpha alpha production and I've just randomized uh, this little um, filter here to make it a little bit um, dotted because from far away you're not going to get a single color you're going to get a whole, whole lot of noise in there so that's it in short and I'm going to jump out of that actually I'll turn off all these yeah and I'll jump back to our <coughs> our main camera unless view wants to crash again no there it is thank you And let's go and let's render this nice and big for the. I don't know what the. Uh, there we go, that's better. Okay, that'll do. And we'll just wait a couple of seconds for that to render. And oh, that's not good. I've got at the moment just to save render power. I've got it set to only render things that are selected, which um, really helps when you've got a huge scene. So you can already see the, the noise um, c coming out in the grass here, um, and as it does its little layers, um, it gets finer and finer, and hopefully that's done, yeah, it's done. So let's go in and zoom in to 100%. So, so if you look at see this in the shadow here it's it's not that obvious but that black strip there that black strip there this one here that's our purple material in fact I can switch back to it and show you um, well we don't quite go across there but um, so it's set to a darker color and so even though it's in a flat light we're still getting different different variations between them. Same thing up here. So that grey brown rock that we had that I had the rotation on, you can see these striations here, the strata that are coming through, but they're only appearing there and over on the right. And you could you could have them coming down here as well if you want. I think this area through here is also the grey brown rock. There's just not enough of it to actually notice um, these striations. So it's a hell of a lot of work. Um, and you should just be glad that I've done it all for you, really, because um, it took a long time to of uh, testing and uh, trial and error, really. So let's uh, let's duplicate this terrain because I don't want to lose what we've, what we've got there, and we'll take a different camera and let's bugger off over here, and I'll show you how. How exactly we do this from scratch? So from scratch, we've got reset material. Let's just go in and we'll load up a grass material, and then we can edit it. So click on mix material, and that'll add a second material, 
and we can load in we go to the rock we got gray brown rock bang it's right there and now uh, let's change this color to dark brownish sort of color so there it is and we'll select the top and go influence of environment tick the box 100% for inf influence of slope and zero there now we have to make sure that our dead grass is on the right so we click that button to swap them and because we want material to to appear on flat surfaces um, you can you can do that other ways without switching them but uh, it's alright I'm sure you'll <coughs> those people who are advanced enough will know about that anyway and uh, the rest of you just won't care anyway so um, okay anyway um, what's next I think we just add a new layer Oh, first we want to uh, we want to ro rotate this uh, material. So we come into the effects, come into tick rotation, edit, and you can play around with with these. Um, the twisting is sort of um, like taking a, a towel uh, and and you know twisting it different ways at, at both ends. Um, that can cause interesting effects. Um, let's have a look if I can find yeah so it'll sort of anchor it at the top and the bottom for instance and then twist it through the middle um, but all we we really need is X and Y rotation Z um, just basically rotates it around um, like the earth rotates on its axis so there's really not much need for that for our purposes and we're gonna go with 15 so um, we can go with a bit more. So that looks, that looks pretty good to me. And then we've added a new layer by clicking the little page button. And when you do click it, you can just go straight to the materials that we want, which I've completely forgotten what they are. Um, so what I'll probably do, I'll just, I'll just come back to the other material and just check it. So we've got grey rock and rock, which is some random thing that I have no idea about. So let's go and load up and try and find the grey rock. There it is. Load. Oh, that, and that's going to happen. Okay, so the way you get around that uh, is you click the load and then you find the material straight up. And then it won't. If you right click and go load material, then it stuffs up. So uh, we'll boost this to plus a few percent, and what that basically does is, um, if it's minus zero, uh, if it's less than zero, uh, you'll see it sort of just uh, washing over the underlying material, and we we don't really want that. So what we'll do is we're going to select our material and look over in the right at our nice little preview pane, and we're going to come into the environment tab and this is where we're going to tweak it so this gray rock we we want to to sort of only appear up in the top areas where it gets really steep so I used point negative uh, 0.68 in the previous one but I'm going to bring this a bit higher so that's a that's about right and then I'm going to increase the fuzziness at the bottom so that we don't really see that bottom gradient in fact I'll bring it up even more that was a bit too much and let's bump that and see what it does there you go so that's actually extending the alpha as well so just be careful of that if you're if you're frustrated and you go oh why is it why is it just covering the entire terrain make sure that your alpha boost isn't at 100% because that could be doing it uh, slope constraint we want this on steep slopes rather than flat ones because it's a rock so we'll do that. I'm going to leave these at zero because I want a sharp, nice sharp edge between this and the underlying grass and, and such. We can always change that later. And the orientation and tightness, I'm going to turn this up to 90% so that I can find out exactly where this color is going. So I'm going to right click and hold and highlight it as green. 
so I can really see with where this uh, material is being applied to and let's come in here have a look at it so there you go you can already see uh, details being pulled out if I if I actually go like this and then render it I'll show you a comparison and these this will be accentuated in uh, in a final render because you have less less noise in there but have a look in the shadow areas like here that's just one one flat color and that's not what you'd see in real life and you obviously wouldn't see green fluoro green but um, it's bringing out the, uh, the the details that we work so hard to get in world machine um, so we might as well use them and this one of the uh, one of the advantages of actually having a high resolution uh, terrain like 4k so that's pretty good actually um, I'm pretty happy with that might bring it just around towards the camera a bit more uh, I need so let's have a look at what orientation that's there we go that's a bit better and I might reduce that a little bit okay so we've got a nice green and uh, green to brown color change there we can highlight the two actually and that'll probably give us a better um, a better comparison let's go with blue see what that's doing okay so after highlighting it now I've realized this gray rock is actually covering all of our gray brown rock because when I if I turn off the, that layer again we'll see this uh, this red well we should have seen that red but it looks like this gray brown rock is just not appearing so uh, the reason for that will be our mixing proportions so we want to tweak this to get our pink highlighted material which is the grey brown rock so we just go like this and we can do a preview render yeah that's perfect that's really good we want this is basically dead grass and we layer other grass on top and we've got our nice pink material it's fantastic if my eight year old cousin was doing it and um, so I'm really terrible with jokes the grey rock um, is now layering on top of that and if we have a look at this it's not because I haven't put the alpha back up so I've put it to minus 100% so let's put that up to 50 and see great that's that's perfect so we got dead grass green and pink done and dusted we're gonna add another layer here and we're gonna find that that rock layer I don't know if we're gonna find it because I have no idea that wasn't it and it doesn't really matter what we use but uh, I'm gonna try to find it anyway I mean, you could probably find much better uh, materials than what I'm using as well. Um, I sort of just go for the uh, material that does the job for me. Okay, well, that's that's fine. Um, let's go with. See if we can find one in here. That could actually work. Or well, this one. Let's let's try this one. This one's quite nice and layered. All right. So same thing again here. We want the altitude range to be. We'll let this one go a, a little lower. Put a bit of fuzziness. We'll bring it down from the top though. And if we highlight it, let's see what we get from highlighting. It's going to make it an easy color to pick. Okay, so it's, it's flipping everywhere at the moment. Um, let's go that one. Um, we want to bring it down off the top, give it a bit of fuzziness. 
let's see where that is. Because what I want to do is I want to have a overall material. So we want to have a cliff material and that covers that overall material, which is our our slanting gray gray brown rock, this one here. And then we have our cliff material, and then we have a second uh, material to even break it up even further. And you could keep going, you can you can have strata and then you could have talus materials and you could have oh, you know, whatever you want. You could have ten different kinds of grass if you wanted that are all facing in different ways, which is not uh, not not all that uncommon. Um, certain plants will uh, grow grow in different areas. Um, this is one of the benefits of of really studying uh, your reference photography and having a look online and really having a look at how would you recreate what you're uh, what you're looking at. So slope range again, restricting our rock to the the cliffside, and we're going to go with a preferred orientation again. So we've, we don't want the same as what we used before. We want about just about the opposite of that, which is 321. So we want somewhere around you know, there. And let's crank that up to see where it's put pointing. So this is in the shadows. So typically what we want to do with a material in the shadow is we want it to be lighter uh, than the other materials. So let's try a little bit lighter. Sometimes it can be uh, good to have also a darker material, and that's what I showed you before um, in the shadows previously over here. In that shadow there, we've got a nice dark strip, which is uh, facing the camera. And that's uh, sort of faking ambient occlusion and uh, the different reflectivity of, of uh, qualities of rock. All right, so let's have a look at the colors of these because we haven't actually tweaked the colors. So I'm going to get a bit more uh, gray brown into this one, make it a bit darker, and this one here, let's get a bit more. Probably a bit too light. I'm just looking at those, that cliff there. That's pretty good. Let's lower this camera so we're actually in a area that we're going to be looking at the volcano from. And let's check it out. All right, that's pretty good. Um, the colors obviously still need tweaking, but um, there's no point in me tweaking those. You, you know how to do them. Uh, we've got we've got nice division in the shadows. We've got great division in the in the lighting, uh, in the lit areas. This radiosity here from our orange uh, material is is playing up a little bit because it's a preview render. That'll look a lot nicer um, later on. Also, I think I've got radiosity cranked. No, it's only at two. That's that's all right. So, the last thing, little thing is our grass layer on top of this, and then we get into our ecosystems. So let's click on the top one. Make sure you've always got the topmost layer. If we select this one and you add a new layer, it'll go in between, and we don't really want that. So actually, we could probably just do, choose this, and that comes with an alpha production. And we just have a look at, let's go 50. We don't really want to boost. What what the alpha boost will do in a case where we've got an alpha here is it will actually modify this alpha. So this at zero, that's exactly what's happening. If you put that to 100%, it will pretty much offset this entire thing so that the grass alpha is not really applicable anyway. And that's not really what we want. All right, let's see if this is working properly. We'll probably have to tweak the scale of our alpha and maybe the filter as well. And it does look like that because it's just applying pretty much everywhere there. Now we've also got um, we've got a control 
where our grass is coming unless no um think fantastically eon uh make these presets with environment the environment in uh, in mind so this is pretty much set you know they've taken the the altitude range say so yeah whatever you're applying to it won't appear right up the top the slope range is 60 degrees we're just going to move that down a bit and we don't want any orientation constraint because we want it to cover everything the only thing that we are going to change though is our alpha filter and we're just going to play around with it and really drop it off in a couple of areas just make it really quite uh, quite obvious and see how how that so I've really increased the the noise in our alpha production All right, so that's good. We've got we got lots of little dots down here to to show up, but we want we want more of uh, of that grass to show up. So if we bump that up, this this can be a bit of a, a tedious moment, to be honest. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stuff around too long for, with this, but stick at it and um, keep trying. Eventually, you'll get something that that you're happy with. Um, so yeah that's not too that's not too bad i might just crank back the alpha boost to 25. you can always copy the uh, settings that i've got in here save out the materials and use them i don't even care if people copy me it's a uh, it's a compliment really well not really but anyway so uh, with that done let's check out the render of it and we probably it's pretty good probably can go in and, and adjust the the bump maps for a couple of these materials so this one doesn't even have any bump maps so we're just going to dump in the grainy fractal which is generally not too um, advisable because it can be quite heavy on your rendering so just be careful with that one um, if you do dump it in you can right click and edit the function come in to select it and just turn up the smallest feature by you know something to like something like one um, in this case we're so far away it's probably not going to even notice All right. now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually try and find we've added some bump to this I'm going to try and find that material and uh, add a bump to that one as well and I think it's one of these two Let's find out. So render. Yeah, there it is right there. So you can see our bump down here, really pulling it out, and that looks really good. I'm really quite happy with that. But what I want to do before I go onto this grey rock, I'm going to copy this and dump it onto our dead grass. So it might actually make the dead grass just three. Let's make that two and make the grass layer three. Not 23, three. Cool, so on our grey rock, let's load up a function. Let's go to our fractals, and these are really cool. Like, I hardly ever see a need to go further than this because they have all the features that you really need. You've got sedimentary rock, you've a more complex version, sediment and grains. Let's go with that one. Let's make it minus 4.5. Um, and see what that does. Oh, cool. So, so we've added in. There's there's the difference between the two. So if I just delete this, <coughs> oh crap! <laughs> I just deleted the whole thing. Um, okay, I'll I'll do that render again to show you. So up here in the top right, you can see a couple of striations there, and that's the that's the sedimentary uh, grains coming through. And there's a couple down here. It's a little bit more difficult to see though, but it's there, and that's all we really want. You don't want any too obvious anything too obvious. Just do one more, one final to. Uh, tie off this section of material creation so there it is 
and I'm actually kind of jealous of that because that looks better than what I had before. Um, so I'll uh, I'll probably save this in in the tutorial. In fact, I will. Um, I'll save these materials so you can copy from either one if you prefer this. Go for it. Be my guest. Save them all. Um, build your library because honestly, yeah. Once you've once you've built a library, you uh, can get work and not even have to do work. You just load up all the presets and send it off and go, okay, yep, give me my paycheck now <laughs> and, and then go down to the pub. <laughs> uh, it doesn't quite work like that, but uh, anyway, the okay, so the next section is our ecosystem and I think we, yeah, we'll just crack on with it. So we're gonna come back across to this one and have a look at the three layers that we had. Oh, I forgot to do the lava. Uh oh. Well, all right. We'll uh, we'll go back one step, and uh, and I'll show you how to put in the lava. So back we go. Um. So what we want is our lava in the top here, and our camera's going to be down below. So it doesn't really matter if the lava's up the sides, and as long as it's out of the view of the of the camera we're fine so we can go in edit material we're going to add a new layer and we'll just add in we just press escape to uh, add the blank layer and you can have it at the bottom or the top it actually doesn't matter um, at all where it is but we want to come to the color and alpha we're going to go to mapped picture and oh sorry we don't want to do that we, what we want to do is we want to add we want to go to our find our lava material uh, I think it's under glowing um, let's see I can't even see I can't read right now I'm trying to find oh, it's under special effects there it is so ashes, you can use that, you got lava trails, glowing lava, I use glowing lava. Load that in, and wow that looks terrible. Um, I'm glad that we don't actually see it. So it will come up to zero, that looks better, it's nice and bright. And we want to go into the alpha, and we edit the function for the alpha. And we want to get rid of that. We want a projected texture. We want the alpha output, I think. We'll check later. And we go load image down the bottom here. And one of these days, it might actually do something. There we go. And come to here. Let's go to f find where your uh, where you saved your map. So you got a whole bunch of different ones there. I think I'm going to use this one. So it's projected on there. And press OK. And we fingers crossed that it actually works. Because <laughs> it doesn't look like it wants to. It doesn't. Oh, wait, hang on. We, what we want is grayscale output. Because this doesn't actually have an alpha. It's just a grayscale. So we might have to flip that and bingo but it's not uh, it's not mapped to the center of that and I believe that's because we need to go to this and go to object parametric or it might be object standard hoping that this isn't gonna make me look like a fool and it is looking like I'm gonna look like a fool so um, right, let's have a look here I'm just gonna go back jump back to our, the actual material where I got it working. So I've got, got it all in there. Oh, I might have... It doesn't even look like I've used the map in here. It must have been cleared out. What I may have done with this is... Or do we have a... Right, so what I've, what I've done here and this is a, a fail on my structure of 
uh, of seeing the structure that I've created here. So um, what we've got is a main mixed material and that's using the, 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 the alpha map. So we've got everything that we created before uh, and we've got, so we've got the first mixed material we made plus the three layers and those are all under one rock and grass layer, sorry, material inside of our mixed material, which is above that. So then we've got the two materials. We're not using influence of environment because all we need, we're not using the alpha, we're just using a distribution of the materials and we're using our map in there. And yet yeah, the mapping position mode is set to object, object parametric, so make sure you do that. Otherwise, it'll be oh, off in the wilderness somewhere. Um, so, if we were to do that, I'm not sure if we can do that retrospectively, but we c if we come back here, we can delete that. Can we click on Mixed Material and turn it into Mixed Material? No, that turns our grass layer. So let's go back again. And we can actually see that the lava has had, that this alpha map has been applied here but it's not actually placing it on the terrain in the correct place. It's just not placing it at all uh, for some strange reason. So, let's see if it works like this. No, it doesn't want to place it. So, oh, it might be because of that. There we go. Yeah, you can see now it doesn't look right because the actual scale of the, uh, of the lava has been changed. But if I do a preview, this is this is one way that you can get around my failure in teaching. Um, there, there it is there, right there, smack bang on the top, and it's a little bit uh, too large. And the reason for that is because now we're changing the mapping mode on everything rather than just the alpha production. So if we come back in here to the projected texture and choose object parametric, think that should allow us to select world standard and look at that that is just amazing sorry I'm, I'm impressed with myself but <laughs> it's, you don't have to be there we go it's uh, it's in there it doesn't matter what it looks like because we're we're down here looking up and what but what we are going to do is come into the effects and the intensity of the material um, I just double check with the other one what strength I put it to uh, it's 30 and 10 on the glowing because that just creates like a glare to the lens and we're not really going to see it but the luminosity is 8, 800% and you can do this other ways you could put a light in there but I find this is the, the most simple we come in here and to give you an example of what it looks like if I just render that top at 100% uh, luminous, we get this, right? That's the glow that gets added at the end. So I'm going to crank that right down and almost off. And if I go 1000 render, it's really going to pump out light. Or it should. It may not um, because of some random reason, but uh, that is very strange. Let's have a look in here. Um, it might be a, a combination. Oh, here it is. Oh, sorry. L luminosity, and then you've got to have co uh, not color reflected, but transmitted light. I believe that's, that's my failure. So here, I'm just going to crank them both up because I feel like it. And then 1000, then if we render, that's oh, still not doing it. Well, I really feel like a, a fool now. But, uh, um, well, anyway, if you if you have any problems with um, getting it to, to work like that, just uh, send me an email. Um, I'll be happy to figure it out. Uh, there might be, a, you might all be sitting there going, oh, do this, just maybe it's turn up those or 
something so obvious and I'm just not seeing it. But uh yeah, anyway, we're going to we're going to continue cuz it's already 45 minutes in and I've got about 15 minutes to get the ecosystems uh, sorted for you. So, back to our main uh main volcano and we're going to have a look at I've got three ecosystems above um the layer that we created. So, you just go you can either select that and go click on the ecosystem, it'll add one above it. Or you can go new and then try and find an ecosystem and then adapt it, but uh, this is usually better. So we've got a pine tree, uh, we're just using the bulky conifer, there's plenty of other pine trees in the library. You've got uh, this one, the Scots pine, sequoia, um, not that one, <laughs> tall pine tree. Um, then you have your third party trees and I strongly suggest having a look at them. Um, but it is another software that you have to buy so um, and also learn and then optimize their trees because some of them are ridiculously high poly and will chug chug your machine especially if you're populating an entire terrain like this so we've got our pine trees and we've got our tussock uh, which I'll show you in a minute and we've got our leafless pine trees just to add a bit of variation in there even though I've actually scrutinized the uh, the image and I can't really see any of them. Um, so <laughs> I know there's a few in there, there's about 1500 when I populated, but um, yeah. So I've populated that and you can see the uh, little nice green dots of where they are. So straight up anyone who's used to view will notice that uh, there's an altitude constraint. They're not appearing up the very top of the mountain as they wouldn't. And in fact, in a real life, you probably won't ever even get pine trees on a volcano um, just as a side note um, so what I've got here is uh, don't worry about the scale because that's a standard thing I've just added a, a variable density uh, and it's just one of the basic ones just look for something that looks chaotic with a with quite a high contrast so something like this is not so is not so good even though you can use a fractal on that uh, sorry a fractal a filter on that later um, and I'm not sure exactly which one I've used for this example but say say I did I did like this uh, noise uh, smooth and then I, I added in and by adding these the the filter like this that way you can you can adjust that so that it has a uh, a more contrasted look to it. So if I even come in here and let's go and find this, it should see how it, sh it shows you what the effect is. Sadly, it doesn't in the uh, other interface. So sometimes that can be a better way. You know, when you edit this, it won't show you what the effect is on that. Density is t totally up to you. Um, I use 76 because um, around three quarters because. I didn't need it a hundred percent that just chugged the machine and I uh, didn't want them to be too scarce I just wanted them to be in in small groups but rather dense uh, decay near foreign objects yeah that's standard so that you're not populating we you've got other things uh, change the scaling to whatever you want it's totally independent like it's everyone's going to change it depends on how much you scale your terrain up and I do suggest that you do scale the terrain up mine is currently at uh, 800 meters high and 2k by 2k in um, not radius but uh, it's x and y dimensions the reason for that is mainly f first and foremost is because the the way the atmospherics will interact with your terrain. If you've got a five meter terrain, well, you can only expect to have think something that looks like it's tiny. Um, so scale it up and uh, everything, and then adjust your scales accordingly. Um, I've I've changed the maximum size variation to one point five, and that's because and it's only on the Z. Um, you have to. Um, bring down the keep proportions because if it's 100% then you're just changing that and it will scale it up proportionately 
but all I wanted was just an extra variation in height so they're not all just a tiny bit of difference I wanted some big really tall ones really short ones and because it's so far in the distance we don't we don't need to worry about it um, sorry we're looking at the pines I've gotten sidetracked so 1.6 and there it is shrink at low densities you can pretty much just tick that box and leave it um, it'll have a default value which is just good and this is what I'm what I, I, I get back to with with everyone that I talk to about about views so it's, it's just all about layering up uh, anything that you can add to it that will make it look like you haven't done anything uh, is is is, is going to be a bonus um, so adding something like shrink at low density so that it uh, you know so that as as it peters out into less dense areas you've got new growth well that's what happens in nature so um, same with uh, color add in a, I've added in a sort of Voronoi uh, fractal I think it was the crystals or was a similar one and I just added a, a color variation and one other thing about color color maps is I just loaded up the foliage and I don't like the fact that it starts at black so I just made it brown and then moved the the green value over and that was it um, it's then then use the influence of variable color and that basically says how strong do you want this this map to be applied to the original color of your of your trees so you know if if you have pink to green you can and you have it only at five percent then it'll only add a little bit of that pink um, which can be a good benefit Altitude range, as you can see, when we look here, I've I've looked at the the height when I populate. You just just have a guess at it, populate the the trees, and then um, uh, and then adjust from there. Slope range again, and um, how steep would a would a pine tree grow? And they can typically they can get into really steep slopes. So fifty one is probably not really steep enough. Um, but I wanted to see some really good cliffs. So I left it at uh, um, at a rather low low value. Um, now I'll jump up to the pine, the leafless pines. These are essentially ex exactly the same. I've got a density um, node. It's it's a different density node. Um, I've set the densities uh, different. The reason this is at ninety one percent is because if I if I populate that, um, what this is is doing is basically it's only going to populate a few few instances there is 138 instances and i mean i don't even think i'd i'd see that on on here so I'd probably go a little bit higher um so again density is relative to your variable density tab same thing with scaling and orientation I s uh, set the scale to the same size as your original pines you can make it a bit bigger if you want or smaller and add add in any sort of uh, chaos factors is, is, is what I like to call it you just you want to add as much chaos to it as possible of course without making it look like a dog's breakfast and just all over the place um, and the presence We've got the altitude range is similar to the pre to the previous one. Slope range, I pulled it back a bit again just to keep a bit of difference between the two layers. Um, but the key the key thing about the this layer and the tussock layer is that I've set the distribution on the on the main general tab to seventy two percent affinity with layer. What that basically does is it takes the layer below it and it says where are the where are the distribution of plants on that layer and then if you have an affinity a positive affinity then the this layer will drag those trees towards uh, the layer the the instances that are on the layer beneath it so we might actually find that if I populate this tussock we'll get more of the leafless pines because at the moment they're going where is everything so if I'm if I move the leafless pine down and populate which is the original idea was to have the pine trees filling out and then the leafless pines to be 
drawn in around them and there you go you got 4500 instances and uh let's see if i can find there they are it's like where's wally um so there they are just sitting there if we look up this mountain we don't have any billboards for the pine trees so we can turn them on so yeah, there's this a shaded billboard this is probably really going to chug the machine while it renders it's really not liking that all right, all right, okay, just all right. don't complain, let's do it. Well, there, there they are anyway. You can see a couple of the pine trees. That's not all, all of them. You can see the dots for the rest of them. And you can see the, the black skeletons, the, this one here, that one there. And they're being drawn in around uh, the, the groups of, of pine trees. And the same thing happens with, let's just turn off our previews for it so we just get the dots and same thing happens with our tussock so I want the tussock to be around the pine trees but I want it to not as not to be not as strongly around them um, also I don't want them to be under the pine trees and that's where I've used repulsion from layer so you can imagine this as um, imagine just a single tree uh, on a hilltop and the tree is covering a lot of dirt and n no light gets down there so there wouldn't be grass underneath the tree uh, but there would be grass growing around the tree and maybe not f that far further away from the tree so you'd, you might have a ring of grass and so the affinity will pull that grass towards the tree and the repulsion will push it away so you get a donut ring shape around that uh, that object so when I populate this um, it will add enormous groups of, of tussock left right and center but they'll all be sort of interweaving between our uh, pine trees and this is going to take a while because there's a absolute heap load of tussock and I, I don't I don't suggest that anyone else um, populates it with this many um, I do because I've got heaps of time and heaps of RAM so my computer doesn't really mind too much I might have to um, might have to cancel it but uh, hopefully not oh, well while, while that's um, populating, um, we're on the density tab here. So I wanted a high high density, but only in these couple of areas. So again, we've got tight groups of um, of tussock, and we've got decay near foreign objects. Again, uh, this this variable density is just another gray, uh, grainy fractal um, preset which I loaded up. And the rest of the op of the options I haven't uh, I haven't edited so well I'm just going to cancel that if I can cancel that right what do I what I might do is I might just uh, pause this and uh, we'll come back once it's populated all right we're back and ready to uh, wrap up this uh, part two tutorial. It's uh, gone a lot longer than I was hoping to make it, so apologies for that. But uh, here you can see the enormous amount of uh, tussock which is uh, populated on this terrain. And uh, what I might do is just come in nice and close here and do a big old preview render for you. Um, no, I don't want that. Hang on. Uh, what I actually had to do is reload reload the scene with the previous one which was uh, already populated so we'll give that a moment and you'll see the effect that it has on and it's going to just 
Let's, we're going to have to get rid of that cloud because that's going to chug it. I'll tell you what, that cloud took me ages. And it's not perfect. It's, uh, it requires a Photoshop manipulation to make it look like uh, smoke rather than a cloud. But, oh great, now we got to wait for this. Um, yeah, so once I finally get this running, we'll see the uh, the tussock appearing around the uh, the pine trees. So I'll just pause it there and wait for this to do its thing again. All right, we're uh, we're rolling, and uh, render's going finally. So now just remember um, this ecosystem wasn't designed with uh, looking at it this close up so while you'll see you'll see what I'm talking about uh, it's not exactly um, has, hasn't exactly been scrutinized at this close so yeah like something like here that needs more bump um, the scales slightly off all sorts of things that I can uh, pick up on this but um, okay so it's not really come out too well but you can see just through here that uh, noisy patch there, a big strong patch of uh, tussock, which has been sucked but sucked in towards itself, but also pushed away from the trees. You got a nice little group here around this tree, group here around that one, um, and while it's a little bit difficult to tell, uh, this these brown bits here are also below a uh, a line of pine trees there, so. Um, let's see if we can zoom out and uh, let's do this slightly smaller. Let's see, we just do the last one. You can uh, you can switch off now if you want. Uh, go to the next part because uh, just going to show you what this looks like, and uh, it's not uh, detrimental if you miss it. So um, yeah, the last things to do: composition is shot, the clouds, the atmosphere. Um, foreground grass we're not going to go into because it's uh, a little bit more complicated um, but I'll tell you what if you really want really good training on on how to create foreground grass um, check out um, ASIL effects um, Nicholas uh, does these do, does the tutorials on uh, that website and um, obviously excess you've uh, got to buy them um, but he's uh, he's got really good skills, so um, and he's a he's a great guy as well. We um, the the Eon crew um, know him personally. We in uh, LA we all met up met up. So um, it's uh, well worth getting a couple of his uh, tutorials that you might be interested in. He's got a lot of them out there. So. All right, we're back. I just uh, paused it to stop wasting your time. Um, this is a better uh, look of of how this uh, is structured, how these uh, these ecosystems are working. You've got you can see these dark areas. Uh, it's not all that easy to see, but uh, you've got the the pine trees in, in nice little tight groups, and then you have our broken up grass and uh, and dead grass in in there. Um, and dotted along there is our tussock, which is generally a, a lot browner. Um, it's a very weedy sort of thing. I've used the fir tree purely because it's the closest thing, and we're so flipping far away that it doesn't matter uh, what it is. It just needs to be something fluffy and short. Um, and uh, that's it. So, cool. Uh, I'm going to cut it there, and we'll be back for our part three, which will be probably composition.